All right. Welcome, everyone, to the Mets Ball Accelerator podcast. Uh, I'm Luis Trevino, and I'm joined here with our co-host today, Cassie Craig from Cass Clinical Consulting and Cass Clinical Mets Ball. Um, and so welcome. Welcome to the first episode, right? We're excited to bring this to you all um, and uh, kind of walk you through the process of what is to come, what is it that we want to do with the Mets Ball Accelerator podcast, and and that, I guess that whole process, right? Board with that. Um, I think that there's a lot to um, to be learned, and I think honestly, I learn best from experience. And I'm often able to learn through other people's experiences. I have the, you know, the wonderful position of going into other people's businesses and helping them, and that helps me help my business because I see things that people are doing, and sometimes it's really great ideas, and sometimes I'm like, you know what, I really want to avoid that. Um, yeah, sure. So I I feel like some of my growth and some of my um, the getting to where I am is because I get eyes on other people's businesses, and most people don't get that. So it's kind of like this idea is like, let's give back, you know, let's let people... Um, let people in on my business, but also let's, let's start sharing people's stories. Let's hear, you know, what's awesome for people and what they're experiencing with the rise in cool sculpting with everybody and their neighbor doing it. Um, let's hear from people. What's the experience. Yeah. And so Cassie and I will just to kind of give everybody like all our listeners today, a little bit of background and, and a bit of an introduction. So Cassie and I wanted to create this podcast, as she was saying, you know, focus in on building a community and learning from each other. Right. I think there is a lot of opportunity right now uh, in the medical spa business. Right. It's a billion dollar industry. There is a lot to learn. And it's still a relatively new industry. What it's been around for relatively what, like 15, 20 years, maybe. Right. Um, yeah. There's, there's. I think last time that I checked, this was a few years ago, but there was only like about a thousand. Well, I want to say like three to five thousand practices across the United States, and yeah. so it's still a growing industry. There is a lot to to learn, and I think uh, you know the goal of the podcast is to essentially build a community and you know, bring guests, bring speakers on that have a unique perspective that have done well, or that have just started and kind of even just giving their perspective as far as like what works, what hasn't worked, what are the hacks, the business tips, the best practices that we're implementing today in 2018, coming 2019, to really help them gain the advantage, right? Or, you know, really help help propel them to the next level in their business, whether that's if they're just starting hitting six and seven figures, or or if they're already seven figures, kind of getting to the point where they want to build a legacy, right? Like they want to have a business where, right. well, I, I guess I'd say like, that's like one of the biggest motivators why I've seen a lot of uh, like medical spas open up, like they want to free up their time because they want to have like owners have other people that are working with them, or they want to build a legacy where they can ultimately build a business and sell it and retire. Like, I don't know, what has been your experience with that? Like, what is your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I meet people all the time who have the, it, it's funny because I meet people who have the dream of either, you know, building something that self runs, um, products like cool sculpting offer the opportunity that the physician not have to do all the work. So yeah. I see a lot of uh, people going after that, and, and that kind of lifestyle. And then I also see a lot of um, physicians, especially who want to be in the business, they want to do one job, and they want that business to be able to run. Um, Everybody, you know, I, I meet a lot of people who are already in the seven figure zone. Um, it doesn't mean that their life's easier. And I think yeah, that absolutely. that's something I was, I was talking about uh, to a client yesterday. It's like, I always fill in the blank, like when I get here, when I get this done or when I get this much money, then everything's going to be easier and I'll be able to breathe. And I think that mindset is the wrong mindset. Um, I think that switching that perspective is, is really the answer to being able to breathe because you know, people, I continually meet people who are at over $2 million annually who still have those same issues um, on a larger scale. So I, I, I'm excited to hear from people and hear uh, if, you know, I think it's a choice, right? I think that we have a choice to sit back and breathe in life. And we have that choice at any time to kind of relax and like the joys in the journey kind of thing. Exactly. Um, but I'm excited to hear from other people to find out if they're if they're finding that joy or if the rise in competition in this industry is actually the opposite of what they were looking for. Um, I think a couple, I think a lot of people got in in the first ten years and just you know got a bigger piece of the pie, so things were easier. And then when they're met with like real business, real competition, 
people cutting prices and moving in next door and all of these things, uh, their staff moving from, you know, them to another location and trying to call their clients, all this, all this stuff. I wonder if, um, if they could take it back if they would at this point, you know? Yeah, no. And uh, I think too, um, that brings, brings me back to one of the videos that I did about two weeks ago when I was talking about, you know, your business is a means to an end, right? And so at the end of the day, you know, you have to go in thinking, why did you build this business? Like, you know, yes, a lot of people wanted to be in there because they wanted to be independent. They wanted freedom, but then they kind of realized that, wow, like I'm actually working even more hours and, and it's granted, you know, when you're doing entrepreneurship, like you're going to be working more at the end of the day, it's all worth it because you're working for yourself. You're making more money. You're building something that you can pass on to your family or your children, you know, et cetera. Right. And so that, I think that's kind of like the dream that everybody has. But, but a lot of people kind of lose track of that. So they, and they don't start with the end in mind. And so one is like enjoying the journey because it's going to be a long journey. It's a difficult journey and you have to really, you're like, you really have to be in it for the long run. Because if you're not, then it's just like, well, you know, then, then what are you really doing? Right. Uh, but at the end, it's like, you know, what is the mean? Like, what is, you know, the business, the means to the end. So then what do you want to accomplish? Right. And, build your lifestyle around that. You know, if you know that you only want to work there a few hours or if you want to actually be on vacations and have somebody there, or if you're a doctor and you want to be performing treatments that you love while other people are generating money in the back end, like, you know, doing these other things, then that's great. But start with that in mind and build a plan to help you get there. Basically. Yeah. I, I, I work with people all the time and it's, and this is such a, a valid, I, I love that we're starting with this because I think that this should be the start of everything it's like, if I, if I ask my clients, I, if I ask 10 people, just random people, um, what is your, what are your goals? I hear things like, well, I want to make a lot of money. Okay. But oh, yeah. like specifically, like, what is it that you want? Um, not only do people not know where they're going, they typically don't have a really good idea of where they are right now. And so, exactly. you know, um, like, how are you going to get to this, this place? I think sometimes, uh, at least for myself, feelings is more of the end point. Like I want to feel free and peace and be happy. And those are too vague to work toward. So I need to figure out from that place, reverse engineer this, like what is going to make me that? Is it going to be $50 million in the bank? Okay. Then how do I get $50 million in the bank? And then just reverse engineer it all the way back to today. And what are the action items I can complete today? to get there. It's incredible how many people are on these huge business ventures that have no idea what they want. And to top that off are stepping. So if they do, I I hear people say a lot, they're okay. Their goal is to be on the beach in, you know, in Mexico, they want to go and, and put their toes in the sand. And then every day they add more work to their plate and they're walking in a different direction. And it's like, how are you going to get there if you continue to add more services or add longer hours? It's, it's like, I, I, I do, um, uh, meditation, like a bit, like a visionary kind of work, uh, for myself. And I picture myself where I want to be. And then I kind of check, it's almost like a, like a daily assessment. Like, are the, are the actions that I'm taking today in line with that future self? And if the answer is no, then why am I doing that? Yeah, exactly. And, and so, I mean, if you were to have to categorize it in a few different points, like what would you say? Like for me, I always think, okay, what are my goals on a financial standpoint? What are my goals on an operational standpoint? And then I kind of leave, I kind of stay there. Um, Mm -hmm. But you obviously that you're working within, like you're actually working within the medical spawners and you have an actual practice. Like, what would you say, like, what are the categories that you're looking at to see, okay, well, I I know I want, I want $50 million in the bank. I know that I want to operational wise. I know that I want to have, like, I only want to be my practice four to six hours a day or less. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so that means that on an operational standpoint, I need to have estheticians, a practice manager, uh, you know, financial advisor, whatever to in place so that I know I can do that. And then what else, like, what else would you say is like another category that you're looking well, at? I think in business, I always look at, there's three arms to me. Um, there is the sales and marketing piece. Yeah. There is the operations and administration piece. And then there's, and then there's your product. And so I'm always, you know, like, uh, like conjure up the, the, the marginal gains of adding 1% value or adding 1% improvement to each of those areas every quarter. 
after some time, you know, and so that's how I start my goal setting is looking at those three areas, making a goal for improvement in each area, not a huge goal, something that is totally doable, and then just relying on time to let those things add up. Now, to take it in life, when I work with people, I like to work at at business stuff, but I also am a a huge proponent of balance in life because um, if I'm working 90% of my energy is going into my business, then that means the other three areas of my life, which I I kind of categorize my life into um, my social life, my wellness, my health, my family life, and then my professional life. And so other people, you might have different categories, but those are typically around the, the four that people um, have. So making sure that goals are set in those as well, all of those as yeah. well as the business. And I think, uh, I think that's a really good point because I think a lot of people don't even have those defined. Like, you know what I mean? Like they don't have those four or five categories, you know? Right. And so I think uh, a really great place is to start there. And so uh, just to kind of um, you know, uh, kind of do like a pivot here or, or a transition into, you know, this is a really great talking point to talk about what, what the goal of the podcast is, you know, I mean, essentially, or what is to be expected in the podcast on the podcast, not only do we want to have people that are coming in with unique experiences, but what exactly are we going to be talking about? Well, one of the things for sure we want to talk about like how to set goals and how to achieve them, right? What are the tactics? What are the strategies that we're implementing today so we can get that stuff done? A big one that I know I really want to touch on that I'm excited about, and I know you're, you're, you're going to have a lot to say in it, is mindset. Yeah. Um, really having the right mindset in building a business. And you know what? Hey, like entrepreneurship is hard. You know what I mean? Like owning a practice, it, even just any type of business in general, it's hard. It can get, it gets lonely, right? You know, and you don't really know who to talk to. It, sometimes it's really hard to talk to your staff, right? Or your spouse about it. Um, so it's like building that community where we can all kind of help each other and you really need to work on having a great mindset. Like if you want to succeed in business, I know you're huge on Tony Robbins. I'm correct in saying that, right? I'm not. No, I'm not. No? I'm not I, thought you were, I, okay. I, I have gotten <laughs> right. Tony Robbins, but I use it as an example a lot because people are familiar yeah. with Tony Robbins. So that kind of, that kind of, um, of work in life is important, whether it be with Tony Robbins or it might be something spiritual or it might be, but, but that kind of working on the internal, because everything around you, my husband, actually, we went to dinner last night. My husband texted me midday and said, Hey, can you go to dinner tonight? And I said, yes. And I'm just assuming that we're going to a business dinner when in fact he wanted a date. And so we had a date last night. We rarely do that. We have kids and we have all these businesses. And so life is, life is crazy, but I, personally don't find life difficult. And I rarely find my place, myself in a place where I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so difficult. So that's a mindset thing. But last night, I, I forget how it came about, but he said to me um, that he said, one of the things that I love about you is that you are always looking at the solutions and you're never looking at the problem. And so yeah. that's, you know, maybe it's ingrained. I've trained myself a long time. I've done exercises a long time it's when nice I mindset works. When I got my life coaching certification, I, you know, I started out as a personal trainer um, and I just couldn't get people to get results. And then I started um, building staff and I just couldn't get the staff. And so it was always like, like what, what's missing. And when I added mindset training and when I added mindset work to the mix, the, the results, you know, grew tenfold. I mean, it was incredible in a weight loss. I did weight loss for a long time. And I would see on average five to 7% of people stay longer than three months yeah. because it was an impulsive decision and people were coming in. And so it was, it was exercise, right? So after three months, it's like, okay, I can't force myself to do this anymore. And so 95% of people or so were falling off or not coming in regularly after that point. When I added mindset work to the beginning, I didn't even, we didn't even pick up any weights for 30 days. We did mindset and walking together while we did mindset activities. I saw it jump to 30% staying longer than three months. So if that can do, and and that's with others, like what you can achieve in yourself if you apply yourself, because we're, we're all overachievers. Um, yeah, yeah, you know? that's what I was gonna say. Like, yeah. like we're in the upper echelon of how people are going to work and, and how um, committed and determined people are for professional stuff. 
Um, so if I can get 25% out of, out of weight loss people who I don't, I, you know, I didn't even know, then imagine what you can get from yourself if you sure. really focus on mindset stuff. And I mean, um, I give people exercises all the time and I work with people and they, you know, it's the easy thing to push off because you don't see any immediate yeah. gains from it, but that's not true. It's no, hundred percent. Like I recently started doing a little, like focusing more on mindset and kind of working more on myself and just like my thought process and kind of limiting beliefs and stuff like that. And then I, I don't, I mean, I know a lot of people reference to Tony Robbins and I know one of the things that he says that I agree with is it 80% is mindset and 20%, I think he says like strategy, technicalities, yeah. and technicality, like for success and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, and, and it's so crazy to really think like that, because like you said, like, it's something that we just brush aside more often than not, because it's not something that we can see immediate results from. But right. I, I swear, like, I've been doing it for the past, like, three weeks, I want to say, and mm-hmm. I can already catch myself like, and it's, and it's the go- whole thing about catching like those limiting beliefs or the subconscious mind where like, all of a sudden, like I catch those things and I'm able to fix them. You know what I mean? Like I'm able to fix the way that I'm thinking, my limiting beliefs or, you know, things that are holding me back to do things to accomplish my goals basically. So I'm, I'm doing this thing every morning where I'm just like, you know, I, I kind of look at my life, what the goals I want, you know, the goals that I want to accomplish uh, look at, you know, and then kind of spend the time just being grateful, like really just being grateful for what I have. And then looking forward towards the goal, seeing myself accomplish them, you know, different things like that. And it sounds like I've never been the type of person because uh, to a certain extent, you get kind of woo woo, you know? <laughs> right, right. Crazy. Yeah, I want to not like, walk yeah. in that line as hard. As <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's so crazy when like, you know, again, going back to setting goals, reverse engineering them, but having being able to really set your mind and have that positive outlook to uh, really help you accomplish, you know, whatever it is that your goals are. Right. And a lot of it, a lot of it goes back to mindset. Um, so mindset's huge. Uh, I think we're going to be talking a lot about it as we keep yeah. you know, going through the podcast. We're going to talk a lot about branding, positioning, how to set yourself apart, how to be different, how to get recognized in the marketplace. Uh, a huge one that I know both you and I are very passionate about is, is sales and consulting. So I know that's like pretty much what you do. So I know we're like uh, that. I mean, we're going to be talking a lot about that. I don't know if you want to elaborate on that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm excited to hear feedback after our first show, you know, because I think we'll have people weigh in on what they want to hear more of. And, and really, yeah. you know, I think um, that people listening, our listeners will guide this more than anything else. But um, I, I, you know, that's what I spend my day doing. And I never have a clear map. Like if I meet, if I were to meet you for the first time and I was going to help you with your business and your life, I don't have uh, an agenda. All I do is listen. And so that's kind of how I've, how I've always run things and how even, I mean, down to the consultations that we're doing in the med spa, if we listen, then the answers present. And if we listen long enough and hard enough, then a very clear um, map forms, like people just can't see it, you know? And so I, um, I, I love feedback. Like I can't wait for the feedback. I, if, if there's no feedback, then I'll go off on mindset for days. <laughs> we can do yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I think there's a lot of things that I know for sure people are interested in. I mean, I know for sure sales, big one marketing tech, not like the latest mm-hmm. technology that is available for best, again, best practices, hacks on how things can be better. What is going on in the industry? Maybe the latest techniques or technologies that are coming into market, different things like that. But I think definitely what is going to drive this is going to be, our audience feedback. So if you guys have feedback, if you have questions, if you have something that you want us to answer or talk about, please, please do not hesitate to comment on this video, send us an email, uh, you know, just check us out. Go to our Facebook group, by the way, it's a Mets Ball Accelerator. Just Google it and you'll find our group and you can just request to join. It's a free open group and that's where our community is. But yeah, by all means, you know, let us know what you all want us to talk about. And feel free to use that platform as a way to collaborate with other providers. But we were talking before we got started about, um, you know, if um, the rising tide rises all the boats, right? And so we kind of want that. We want that theme in this. We want everybody to be working together to do more in the industry. Because honestly, if we build awareness in, because there's, like you said, this has only been around for less than a couple decades. And so 
medical aesthetics is not something that households like, like mom, stay at home moms are thinking that they can have a piece of and when in fact they can. And so we have a whole market of people who have not even been introduced yet. Um, so I think there's plenty out there for everybody, but use this platform to collaborate, use this platform to ask questions, um, because there's going to be providers from all over the nation in here. And so it's a great way to, if you have, um, a win or uh, a question or a challenge or a frustration to air it out there and get people's feedback that are, you know, feel like, like you were saying, sometimes the med spa industry or being a business owner gets lonely because you can't talk to your staff about what's going on because you got to keep like a hierarchy there. Um, and you don't have any other med spa owners that you can lean on because they are all considered competitors, the ones that you know nearby. So use this platform, definitely. I hope to see people um, interacting in there. Yeah, I wanna see a ton of engagement. So feel free, do not hesitate to post any uh, questions, challenges, or uh, wins. It's been, like wins is huge, like, you know, celebrating the wins. I think, I think that's a big thing. Like, like I was saying before, like entrepreneurship is a lonely road. It can get a little like, you know, he hectic and stuff like that. And every now and then you just need to celebrate the small stuff, you know, and you need to have like a tribe, somebody that you can share that with. And just uh, again, to like kind of go back to building, getting, you know, just being more motivated, feeling more encouraged. Um, and we all kind of need to like really help each other out, feed off of each other, I think. So that is really what we want to accomplish with the community. So if you want to join the community, uh, look us up on Facebook at Mets Ball Accelerator and you'll find us there and send us a request and we'll get you added right away. Um, yeah, absolutely. We're also, uh, we got a lineup of featured guests coming. Yeah. And so if you have something that you'd like to talk about, then um, just raise your hand on that one too. And we'll make sure uh, that we can bring you on at least for a part of a show. Yeah. And so we want to keep these shows. We might have gone already like a little bit over, but we want to keep them anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes. I, we want to be very respectful of your time. So anybody who wants to come on board, do not, you know, do not be, do not worry that, you know, you don't have enough time or whatever. I mean, we'll keep the shows about 20 minutes, something along th those lines. And we'll mm -hmm. get you guys on here, get your new perspective to really broadcast to the world, really. Um, so to, to kind of close off a little bit, um, I wanted to kind of talk a little bit more about, your background, Cassie. I mean, you have a very interesting background. You came from the fitness industry and then you decided to open up a med spa. So I would really love uh, for our audience to hear a little bit more about kind of your story, what got you to the fitness industry, and then what brought you to opening up a medical uh, aesthetics practice? Sure. Um, so when I was uh, about 21 years, I was 21 years old and I lost a lot of weight. And that kind of sparked this what I, what I can see in hindsight as the kind of a psychic shift, something in my mind shifted. I thought that it was all just weight loss, you know, like I finally got it, right? So I wanted to start teaching everybody. And um, honestly, as a side note, like I was tired of going to college. <laughs> and so I paused what I was, I was two years in on my um, bachelor's and I went and opened my own business and it went over like, crazy. Like my own story, my excitement and passion for helping people lose weight, just that's all I needed. And I was in a what, small what town. What was the business, by the way? What was the um, It was called the New You Women's Weight Loss. And okay. it was a boutique style ladies health club. Uh, I did a lot of retail, a lot of um, meal replacements. And I did some uh, clothing, like a clothing line for a little while that was really cool, like sports clothing with, it was bedazzled and sparkly and, um, but it took off and it yeah. was, you no, know, but it was owner operated. And so I found my limitation uh, when I wanted to go back to school a couple of years later and finish my degree. My limitation was that I was working 12, 14 hour days and I was the only person I could rely on. So that's when I started training staff and finding the challenges with training staff. And so then I had staff, but when I would lose one and have another, then it was hard to train that person. So I realized that I needed to systemize. So the, the life business lessons uh, were learned really by running into walls and trying honestly the wrong way first. That was my husband uh, points out, you know, that I find the solution instead of seeing the problem, like, okay, well now we need to do this. And I just did that for 15 years. Um, in 2015, I sold my last health club. Now at this point I had actually opened, I had gotten into opening health clubs and selling the health clubs. So first I was great at membership sales. Then I turned it into health club sales. Once they were systemized, I had a turnkey 
solution for somebody who wanted a health club. And usually it was a member or one of my staff who would end up buying it. So I sold eight. Um, and on my eighth, the last one, I had added a spa in the back. Now I had gotten my bachelor's degree in education. And that was kind of this, like when I started having kids, I have five kids, right? So when I started having kids, I was like, you know what, this is irresponsible. I need to go get a job that gives me medical, gives me, you know, paid vacation, gives me more stability. And so I went and finished my degree. And when I went into my student teaching, I realized that it was not going to work. It was just not me. So at that moment, I'm like, okay, well, I've just wasted 50 grand on an education that I'm not going to use. But when I sold my last health club, I had gone back to school and gotten my aesthetics license. I had met, I had gone through divorce and had met my future now husband, um, who was a physician. And so we kind of birthed the idea of a med spa after I had watched this lower, uh, smaller square footage turn bigger revenue than the whole gym. And one of the most attractive things was that I could see clients by appointment in health clubs. You don't get to set appointments for people. You're there. And when they come in, they come in. And so, um, it was, you know, more conducive to, um, the sports and stuff that were going on with the kids. So yeah. we opened the, um, the med spa and cool sculpting just kind of showed up. And I, at first was like, no way am I doing that? Cause I'm not in debt and I don't want to be in debt and absolutely no way. And then after some time, it just kind of, you know, when you know something's going to happen and you're almost fighting it, like I don't want to, but I'm gonna. Um, and so that was cool sculpting. So I added it on and we were instantly successful, but it was just applying those health club strategies, which were consult consultative. They were listening. They were, um, and then putting the administrative and operation systems in place from the health clubs. All that really changed was the consent forms. You know, the medical legal part had, I had to learn. And um, I actually had a consultant do that because I didn't know it. Um, but anyway, here we are. I, um, I think I heard from a, a dear friend early on that, um, you know, it, often innovation comes from outside of an industry. And so it's like these ideas that were not new to me, they were tried, true, tested. They were just, you know, robotic at this point. When I put them into a different industry, then it all snapped. Then it all came together. It clicked and it was like, ah, that's what I've been working on this whole time. So, you know, we talked about in the beginning of this, the end point and understanding your end point. I never saw myself here. I don't think that if we're on the, if we're on our right path, um, if we're doing the thing that is the right thing right now, we really don't know where we can't see the possibilities. We can't see how big or how successful or how free. So, um, you know, I, I think when you're, when you're setting that endpoint for yourself, it, it does have to be kind of feelings and, um, some nice thing, you know, like putting your toes in the sand in your mind and stuff like that. But, but really the, the, possibilities are endless once you sure. um, just get, get in your groove. Yeah. And no, I, mean, I think that's a really good point. At the end of the day, I feel like your goals and, you know, the end point is always going to be evolving. You know, obviously like you're always growing as an individual. And so every six months I would always, I, I always tell people when I do this myself, like I go back to my goals and see how they like how, how they change because, you know, we're always going to want better things. We're always going to, how, you know, envision better things or things that we never even knew were possible. Like I had no idea I would have a podcast here with you today. You know what I mean? Like, but it's awesome and right. I want to keep doing it. Right? right. But I never would have fathomed that, you know, a year ago. Um, right. And so really being able to kind of establish those goals and keep coming back because they're going to be evolving. They're going to be changing as you're growing as a person, as a businessman or woman. And just, you know, obviously like, you know, as, as you continue to, to go through your life. So I think that's huge. And so you talked a little bit about fitness industry. You came to kind of in the medical space. Um, and then now you do a little bit of kind of, uh, you know, obviously you run your practice. You're, I know you're opening up a new location, so that's yeah. exciting. Yeah. But at the same time, you also do a lot of consulting for other practices. Yeah. So can you yes. talk about that? So, so my, you know, I'm always growing and always evolving, like you said, but um, when I got to the place where now we're diamond with everything that we provide, we're at the top level and we are opening a new location that is a little bit more um, lo local to where people are right now. Our, our existing business is really across the street from a cow pasture, like very hard to get to. Yeah. And it's cost a lot of money to drive clients that far. Um, so what I'm going to do or what I'm doing, and it actually starts this weekend. So this is exciting. I didn't know I'd talk about it. Um, I have begun a certification process, whereas my clients who I've been working with, um, 
I'm flying them in and I'm teaching them from beginning to end. And actually my new, we're doing orientation for new staff too. So we have a, we have a crowd of over 20 people going to be in these, in the certification center this weekend. And that's really what we're going to use this for. So I, my education degree that I thought I wasted $50,000 on, um, it, it finally comes to fruition. It finally, like yeah. everything connects. I get it. <laughs> that is so awesome. And what is the name of the, of the uh, certification? Um, we're calling it patient first mastery aesthetic certifications. So awesome. we will do a level one, which is really a generalized sales and consultations and uh, basic employee staff stuff. Um, but I, I expect that level two and three, I'm going to really specialize these people into their specific um, niches within the business. So some of them are estheticians, some of them are cool sculpting, some of them are front desk. So we're really doing a generalized kind of how to deal with people and the psychology behind um, sales and, and our clients. And then um, I'm excited to get into like, you know, Bellafill and go into the product. Uh, God, my husband is doing some crazy things. So with the physicians getting trainings going on and all of that. So it's very exciting. Now um, it'll be a very peaceful place for people who are on a vacation to come out and hang out near the cows. Um, and, and learn a little bit about how to maximize and, and really shift the mindset of the group. You know, um, yeah. I, I guess it's a topic for another show, but I, I talk about group think and it's like almost like, like a zombie kind of thing. Like once the culture has something wrong with it in the business, then it's like everybody just kind of hurts together and assumes that, you know, so-and-so, what so-and-so said is true and all of that. So getting people aware of those little things that everybody can do to um, improve the business and getting them feeling connected with the ownership of that, uh, the why, finding out their why, you know? Um, so very excited. Awesome. So you guys heard it. It's in the name patient first mastery uh, certification. So if you guys want to get certified by Cassie, you need to reach out to her right now. <laughs> but yeah, no, but I, I think to 20, but we're going to do it uh, monthly. It looks like, cause I still have, I still have some people to fit in next month. So that's awesome. No. And I think, um, I think you, I, well, I mean, you know, obviously working with you for a few months now, I think you bring a very unique perspective in, in the uh, medical aesthetics practice kind of management, how, and really just operations, I guess, because at the end of the day, you know, obviously you have your, your fitness kind of sales background. And I think that plays a huge, obviously it plays a huge role in everything you do, but going back to everything you've preached and said since the very beginning, which is focused on listening, focus in on the patient, what their needs are, what their concerns, what their challenges are, and then tailoring a solution based off that. And I feel that's why, I mean, the certification name is amazing, you know, and it kind of really fits in because it's patient first, right? Mm -hmm. And, and if, I think in any type of business, um, the, the, uh, one of the sure ways that, you know, you'll succeed is that when you can really provide value to someone, right. And that's all business is. If somebody has a problem, if you can provide a solution, then you're providing value. And at the end of the day, you'll be successful. Right? You can ultimately charge money for that and mm -hmm. you'll, you have a business all up. Right. And so the more valuable you can be to somebody by providing them a solution that is specifically tailored for them. And, and, and especially at this age where, Everything is so customizable with the internet. Everything is so personalized. Treatments have to be personalized and designed for a specific person. Like it has to be there if you want to win and dominate in the marketplace today, yeah. because that is where the industry is going. And so really having those skills that you're going to be teaching people in a certification is key. Like, you know, it is so important. And obviously, you know, the success, your success speaks for itself. I mean, triple diamond certification on Botox, Bellafil and cool scoping. I mean, that, that is amazing, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. No, it's, um, it's, it's all in understand. It's all in that compassion. And so sure. whether it be um, a sales problem in the business, sometimes it's a staff problem and a sales problem. And so we kind of like we need to do that for everybody, hear everybody and validate everybody. And um, just having the cool sculpting device is not enough. That's a solution, sure. But if people can't connect it to their specific problem and how it's going to give them, how you're going to give them the best result, then people know at this point that everybody provides cool sculpting. And it's getting to the point where people are knowledgeable enough to even call in, just like they do say, they say how much per unit of Botox. They're saying how much per cycle of cool sculpting. So if you can't really connect, um, then you're just going to lose business to the people who are doing it for nothing. And those people are out there, unfortunately. 
Yeah, yeah, hundred um, percent. And then just just to kind of give a, a little bit of background as far as like, I mean, why I'm in this. Yeah, like, <laughs> uh, well, no, I mean, I, I guess I, like I've always just been passionate for business. I mean, right now I'm the CEO, CEO and owner of Arable. We're a full service marketing agency, but we specifically specialize in working with medical aesthetic practices. That's all we do. Um, and so I've been working with medical aesthetic practice for almost three years now. And really where I got my feet wet in the industry was actually working with a cool scoping practice in my local area. They were just having trouble generating patients, generating leads in a week. In seven days, we got them 126 leads where before they would only get about like four phone calls a week, something like that. So ever since then, I was like, oh my God, like, and at the time I was working at another company where I was a co-owner at, um, i I saw that there was a lot of, you know, opportunity in the cool scoping industry. And I said, you know what, I want to open up a business that is specifically specializes in working with, you know, cool scoping practices, but then beyond that, just medical aesthetic practices as a whole. Right. And I think for me, uh, I've always been passionate about business. Like, I mean, I grew up in a family well, uh, where, my dad was always like an entrepreneur. My mom was a stay at home mom, but she always did like the thing where she had like side hustles and stuff like that. So she was always like doing something different, you know, <laughs> I was, I was selling things. I was like selling things since I was a little kid. I would sell candies because we used to live like near, uh, we used to live near a school, like an elementary. And so uh, we would buy candy and they would pass by my, my house. And then they knew that I would sell candy. So I would sell candy to them. So, <laughs> and then my dad was always like, why would you ever want to, work you know have a like a job like why would you ever want to work for somebody else when you can just work for yourself and as, as you know being young like you kind of just like yeah sure dad like you know whatever right uh, you kind of ignore that but that was really ingrained in me and I could tell like even when I was in college like I hated being in college like I had my first business at 21 um and I, I guess I always hate like I kind of hated being in college because of the time restrictions right you had to be in at a specific time be out at a specific time and stuff like that and to a certain point, I kind of felt like a little, de not depressed. Well, I mean, you know, just kind of sad. Like you don't feel at home. You don't feel like yourself, you know? And so I always said, like, uh, after I graduated, I said, like, I never want to have like work for somebody else. And so I had my first business at 21 while I was still in college. I graduated. I still had the business. I wanted to keep that going. Um, but I've always been passionate about business and just really helping other people succeed. And, and I guess going back to that, like, being passionate about helping other people see the success they want. And that's really what I love doing what I do now, because I've, I've done, I've done it all. Like I've done cold calls. I've done, I've walked, you know, in South Texas where it's a hundred degrees or more knocking on doors on businesses, trying to sell people, trying to keep our business alive. Because at the end of the day, number one is sales and cash flow, right? If you don't have those things, then your business is going to fail. And so that's the number one reason businesses fail. So you know, doing cold email, uh, doing like marketing, advertising, I've done it all. And whenever I, uh, after a few years of doing that, I discovered this system of doing direct response slash inbound marketing advertising to really help build out the sales pipeline, right? And when I discovered that, it really kind of became the opportunity where, you know what, I don't have to go pound the streets or cold call people anymore to really build out my pipeline and to do prospecting. And I'm like, wow, like this is not, this is a surefire way. This is a way that we can help businesses grow, not in three months where you're doing SEO. I mean, SEO is great and on, you want to do SEO, but a lot, it's a long-term strategy where it's like, well, you know, if you hire somebody, it's going to take, you know, three to six months to see any result. At the end of the day, what we're doing today in marketing, what is a, uh, the opportunity that is available today is like, you can start seeing results tomorrow. You know what I mean? Like you start seeing leads, you start right. getting interest you know, hours, hours, like from when you, from when something is implemented. Right. So I think there's a huge opportunity. And, um, right now we work with, obviously we work with you, right. So you bring, uh, you know, working with you brings a lot of insight, but we work with practices all across the United States and really helping them build out these foundations one, but then two implementing the systems for building out their pipeline and getting new patients in the door, butts and seats, and just ultimately increasing revenue. It's incredible. You know, I remember that moment. I'm going to break in because I want to speak to Everable. Um, I remember that moment when I had the aha, like, oh my gosh, now we get, just get people, like you can find people on Facebook specifically who are 
like looking for this or who like this or who like, it's so cool because I remember the cold call days I've done. Like I remember the door to door or business to business, sweating, putting flyers on, on car windshields. Like I remember this. And so it used to have, we used to have to physically hustle a lot more than we do now, but I will speak to Everbull. Um, I am really enjoying working with this company because it's a, it's a one-stop shop. And the, the company that was previously doing my stuff that was a fit for a while, um, if that person or that company handled everything. So you guys are doing that again. And so in the interim, when I, when I didn't have, like I worked with some big companies, I really worked with about 20, 20 or 25 marketing companies in a short uh, span of time. And I first off did not see results. Secondly, I, you know, they only handled, they wouldn't handle like the lead forms. They wouldn't handle the, you know, anything other than just getting names. And so I really um, appreciate you guys, but I will say that with, you know, I had a marketing company for over a year that was a good fit and was doing it and we were hustling. And then when that uh, relationship ended, um, I thought, you know, that I wouldn't be able to see leads coming in for the price that he was getting them ever again after I worked with a few other companies. And we're getting, you're, you're getting leads for my company that are more qualified and for a quarter of the cost at times. So whereas uh, we were paying, you know, $45 per lead now, you know, sometimes we're paying 12 to $15 with you. And so I don't even know if I've said that to you, but I really appreciate it. <laughs> no, I appreciate that. I appreciate you saying that. Um, so I guess just to kind of come to a close here, I mean, you know, again, just to reiterate, uh, we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff. So you definitely want to be in, you know, part of the episode, you want to tune in. We're going to be launching episodes every single week. Uh, and again, if you want to be part of the, you know, part of the podcast, if you want us to interview you or share your story, share your unique perspective, by all means, reach out to us, join us in our community on Facebook at Mets Ball Accelerator, go ahead and find us. Um, we're going to post this. So this is our first one, right? And we're going to post this on iTunes. So we are going to have the video. You're going to be able to listen to the audio file on iTunes pretty soon. And then we're actually working on our website right now. So later, if you want to uh, provide us with your uh, email address, we'll go ahead and actually email you every time we have a new show out so you can listen to it on your, you know, drive to work or you drive out to work or lunch or wherever, or, you know, in the morning <laughs> so you can stay up to date with what is going on in the medical aesthetics industry um and you know what 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 people are doing to really find success um so again and if you have any questions feel free to post them on the group or send us an email contact us any way shape or form and we will you know we'll get those answered we'll we'll do a show about it but by all means guys we want this to be driven by you we want this to be a show about you so reach out to us, help us kind of guide the show into whatever it is that, that you want us to want to be seeing in the, in the marketplace right now. Yeah. I'm excited. So yeah, we're super pumped. that went well. I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you everyone. And so catch us in, uh, tune in next week and to listen to episode two. Thank you. Bye.